Hi, I'm Tessa Davis. I'm a paediatric emergency medicine consultant. The question we're going to look at is how do I calculate the IV fluid requirements in children? I should say that this is not for patients who need fluid resuscitation. That will be a different calculation. This is for calculating maintenance fluids for patients who cannot meet their fluid needs entrally. And it's going to be different for patients where the, the calculation of insensible losses is important. So this isn't going to work for patients with acute kidney injury, with chronic kidney disease, with patients whose weight's above the 91st centile or oncology patients. And that's because for these patients, using body surface area is going to be better, and more accurate. But for other patients that are more straightforward, using body weight to calculate fluids and electrolyte needs is how we're going to do it. You need to measure the electrolytes when you start, and then you're going to measure them at least every 24 hours on IV fluids, or more frequently if they've got an electrolyte disturbance. Similarly, you're going to keep an eye on their sugars and if they're at risk of hypoglycemia, you're going to do that more often. And if they've got hypo or hypernatremia, the fluid calculations are going to be different. And finally, we're not talking about neonates. So this is going to be for children over one month who can't meet their enteral requirements and you need to calculate their fluid maintenance. And when you're doing that, you want to use the holiday Seeger formula. And there's two ways of calculating it. One is calculating it over 24 hours and the other is calculating it hourly. So if you want to do it over 24 hours, this is the calculation you need. So you use 100 mils per kilo per day for the first 10 kilos, then 50 mils per kilo per day for the second 10, and then 20 mils per kilo per day for each kilogram after that. And remember that over 24 hours, males rarely need more than two and a half uh, litres and females rarely need more than two litres. So in the higher ends of weight range, you're going to be looking more to adult calculations rather than using this paediatric calculation. I'm going to give you an example. So the example is a 24 kilo child. So if we use this holiday Seeger formula for the first 10 kilos, we're going to use 100 mils per kilo. So that will be a litre of fluids. For the second 10 kilos, you're going to use 50 mils per kilo, and that'll be another 500 mils. And then for the last four kilos, you're going to use 20 mils per kilo, and that'll be another 80 mils. So if you add all of these up together, the 1,000 plus 500 plus 80, you're going to get 1,580 mils over 24 hours. And if you divide that by 24, you're going to get 65.8, which is going to be 66 mils per hour that you'll be prescribing this patient for their fluid requirements. And you can also use a per hourly calculation which is an alternative version of the holiday Seeger formula. For this, use 4 mils per kilo per hour for the first 10, then 2 mils per kilo per hour for the next 10, and then 1, mils per, one mil per kilo per hour for the next 40. And again, when you're getting to over 60 kilos, you're likely to be using 100 mils per hour for patients. So to use the same example, which is our 24 kilo child, you're going to calculate it for the first 10 kilos as 4 mil per kilo per hour, which will be 40 mils. And then for the next 10, it'll be 2 mils per kilo per hour, which will be another 20 mils. And then for the last four, it'll be 1 mil per kilo per hour, which will be 4 mils. So when you add all of this up, you get 64 mils per hour, which will be 1,536 mils over 24 hours. And you can see that the calculations are slightly different, but they're not clinically significantly different. So using either is fine. My personal practice is to use the 24 hourly one and divide by 24, but I think that's probably just because it's the way I've been taught and I can see that it is much easier for some people just to use the hourly calculation and that's completely fine. So we've used, talked about how to calculate the maintenance fluids, but sometimes you will need to calculate the fluid deficit and that's going to be if the child comes in, for example, with dehydration. The most accurate way of doing this is if we know what their pre-morbid weight is. So if they previously weighed 11 kilos and today they weigh 10 kilos, then we know that they've lost a kilo. And that's helpful because we can accurately calculate it. And so the ideal is to do the pre-morbid weight in kilos minus the current weight in kilos and multiply that by a thousand. But much more commonly, we don't have their pre-morbid weight because they've just come to ED with dehydration. And so we use the second calculation here, which is that we use their weight in kilos times their percentage dehydration times 10. Their percentage dehydration is going to be how you clinically assess the child and calculate that. We're not going to go through how you assess that in this video. We'll do that in another video. But you're going to get a percentage that's likely to be 5 or 10%. And you use that for this calculation. So in the example we gave, which was the 24 kilo child, if we say that that child's got 10% dehydration, 
then you're going to calculate the fluid deficit by doing 24 times 10, his percentage dehydration, times another 10. So the fluid deficit in this child is going to be 2,400 mils. And this deficit is going to be replaced over 24 or 48 hours. So if you wanted to replace this 2.4 litres over 24 hours, you're going to be giving them 100 mils per hour. Remember that that's just the deficit. So you have to replace, add the maintenance fluids as well. So if their deficit's 100 mils per hour, and we worked out previously that their maintenance fluid's 66 mils per hour, then giving their maintenance plus their deficit replaced over 24 hours is going to be 166 mil per hour for this child. So we know now how to calculate the maintenance and how to calculate the deficit. And finally, I'm going to give you my three top tips. So the first top tip is to use the right fluids. So you should be using isotonic crystalloids and you should be using something that contains 131 to 154 millimoles per litre. As standard, we use normal saline, so 0.9% saline and 5% dex. That contains 154 millimoles per litre. You could also use plasmalite and Hartmann's, but most commonly we use 0.9% saline and 5% dex. My second tip is to consider the risk of water retention. So if you've got a child with a risk of water retention associated with non-osmotic ADH secretion, then you might want to consider whether you really want to give them full maintenance fluids or whether you want to restrict it. So for example, in the child we calculated needed 66 mils per hour for full maintenance, you might want to restrict it to two thirds, so 44 mils per hour. That might apply to acute CNS conditions. So in children with meningitis, with tumours or head injuries, it might apply to some pulmonary conditions. So pneumonia or children with mechanical ventilation. So it, make sure you think about, does this child need full maintenance or should I be giving less? And the final tip is to think about electrolytes. So usually we'll add potassium once we know that the patient's got normal electrolytes and renal function and the standard is 20 millimoles per litre. But you can adjust this depending on what the results you get back from your electrolytes. So we've looked at how to calculate maintenance fluids either over 24 hours and then divide by 24 or hourly. We've looked at how to calculate deficit and I've given you tips on how to choose the right fluids, how to reduce the maintenance fluids if needed, and keep an eye on the electrolytes. So I hope now you feel more confident in calculating and prescribing fluids in children.